Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. Um, just want to take one quick minute. Tell you to go visit my website, hillbillyrv.net. Uh, check out all that's going on there. Be sure to sign up for the email. Hopefully it'll be fixed by the time this video comes out. And uh, so we can communicate. And uh, yeah, let's just get into this. I, I've, I've been thinking about doing this uh, video for quite some time. It's just going to be a very basic, uh, very general electrical video on your RV. Let's call it RV Electrical 101. Um, what a lot of people don't seem to comprehend, I, you know, uh, service guys get these calls all the time. Hey, uh, I just got to my camper and nothing works. What do you mean nothing works? Because that's a pretty broad statement. Um, and then you, you start asking more questions and you find out, you know, maybe just uh, the, um, you know, their air conditioner won't come on, their, uh, um, their refrigerator's running on uh, propane, uh, the microwave's not working, um, their TV and stuff's not working. All right, you figure out it's the AC side of the camper. And then you'll have, then you'll have the other call and after asking more questions, you'll find out that the lights aren't working. You know, the air conditioner's not working. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, the refrigerator's not working. Um, you know, uh, no, did I say lights? No lights. Um, and then you, you know, then you figure, okay, it's on the DC side of the camper. So let's just quickly go over basic RV electricity. You, you really truly have two separate electrical systems in an RV. You've got your AC alternating current, uh, which in America is uh, you know, typically 120 volts and it's uh, 60 Hertz. And then you've got your DC or your direct current. Okay. They are tied together at some of your appliances. But it's like it's two separate systems, okay? Your AC power comes in from your pedestal or wherever you have your, your camper plugged in with the shore cord. It comes into your camper. It goes to your power distribution panel. Now, like I said, this is super basic. This is just a little travel trailer. You know, you start adding motor homes and, and big fifth wheels. This gets a lot more complicated. I'm just trying to keep it simple, okay? Power comes in, goes to your power distribution panel, and what that powers, that powers the AC side of the air conditioner. It's a little confusing. Powers your microwave, the AC side of your refrigerator, the AC side of your water heater, and all your receptacles inside your camper, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's move to the DC side. All right, your DC is your direct current, and let's just, for the sake of argument, let's just say it originates at your battery on the tongue of your camper, okay? What's it run? It runs your lights, it runs the controls for your air conditioner, your refrigerator, your water heater, okay? Just the controls part, because all these things have a, also have a AC side, okay? And it runs your furnace. Now the furnace, it's, it's strictly DC. So all it needs is DC power and uh, propane, and she's going to work. All right. This is set up, the RVs are set up for dry camping if you want to dry camp. Okay. Now you can use your, you know, you can use most of your camper. If you're dry camped, just sitting in the middle of a field, with nothing but a good fresh battery. All right, you're gonna be able to use your lights. You are gonna be able to use your uh, refrigerator as long as it runs on propane. All it needs is a good DC power source to run the controls, propane to, to heat, the, uh, heat up the flue where it needs to heat up and it'll work. Your water heater will also run on gas. So all it needs is DC and propane. It'll work, your furnace will work. Um, what won't work is your air conditioner, okay? Um, because you had need AC power to run the air conditioner. The DC only runs the controls. All right, so that's if you're dry camp, okay? 
if you are plugged in, okay, you've got AC power coming into your, your little uh, travel trailer here. Uh, the power, you know, of course it powers all the AC sides of this stuff here, but it also comes over here to the converter, which will charge your battery. So you can, you can work, run your RV in this configuration for ever, uh, you know, it won't last that long, but in theory, it will, it will go like this for a long time. If you're dry camp, you're only running off your battery. Uh, this stuff will only work until the battery goes dead and then it won't work no more, okay? That's why we have a converter. Uh, when your short cord is plugged into an AC source, it's charging that battery. And then these, these DC appliances that need DC for controls, um, let's just take the air conditioner for instance, okay? Your roof air, okay? The controls need DC power, okay? This green marker just doesn't show up real well. Your controls need DC power, but you also have to have AC power to run the compressor and the fan, okay? So that's why you cannot use your air conditioner if you're dry camped and you only have a battery on a tongue. All right, everything else, the microwave, um, it, it has only the one source of power because uh, they're just basically residential air conditioners. Um, all right, is that clear as mud thus far? So yeah, the only place that the two systems are really tied together are just at your converter. Uh, just because your, your converter um, needs AC power to convert to DC to charge the battery. Now, let's talk about the uh, refrigerator and the water heater really quickly. Um, so you got your refrigerator. Now, there again, the refrigerator has to have DC power to run the controls and if you want it to run on um, AC element, you know, the, the AC heating element, then you need AC. But if you do not have AC, then uh, it will run on gas, okay? Water heaters, same way, all right? Most of your water heaters today have, they'll either work on gas or electric, uh, but again, they need DC power to, to run the controls and if you want the heating element to work, you have to be plugged into AC, so you got an AC source. But it will work off an LP. So, yeah, does that make sense? Probably not. I'm probably not doing a good job explaining this, but I don't know. I'm trying, and I, I think this is a, a necessary video because this just this just throws a lot of people, and uh, you know, it's just it, the more the more informed you are. The more information that you can give us when you call and you know you've got some kind of problem with your rv so uh, i'm just trying to trying to help everybody you guys and all the rv techs out there in the whole www can benefit from this information because you will be more informed so i know this is just like i say it's just super simple and super generic um Every RV is a little bit different, but for the main part, they, they all use these basic principles uh, and designs to run the electrical system. So, uh, I think, I think that's all I've got. I'll know when I edit this, uh, and I may have to reshoot it, but who knows? <laughs> if I do, you'll probably not see this part, but uh, yeah. Leave me a comment, criticism, concern. Um, yeah, let me know what I got wrong here, what I got right, and uh, that's uh, that's all I got for today. Y'all have a fantastic day.